So I'm really excited about today and been able to answer some of your questions and give you a guided tour around the new Google Search Console. As you may or may not be aware, there's been a ton of changes in Google Search Console recently. Um, they've moved about a load of things and there's also been some issues um, recently where there's been different little glitches. So quite a lot of emails from clients asking questions about things where maybe there's been some random errors coming up. Um, so th the chances are if you've had some unexplained errors recently, it's probably some of the little bugs that um, have appeared over recent weeks and probably nothing to worry about. So I would keep an eye on things, but it's something to be aware of for sure. Um, awesome. So I'm using um, a selection of screens here, so hopefully I can keep an eye on your questions and answer things as we go. But we're going to start off completely from scratch. And the benefit is with the Photo SEO Lab website being brand new, I've literally not set up um, tracking on Google Search Console yet. So I'm going to just demo setting that up so you know exactly what to do. Awesome. Okay. Right. So Google Search Console, the purpose is really to be able to see um, the performance of your different posts and also for Google to share loads of other data on your site. So it's really important to track your data in there. And I'm signed in at the moment, so I'm just going to screen share. So when you sign into Google Search Console, this will be the screen that you'll see initially. But before you get here, let's just wind things back a little bit and look at how you actually would um, get into Google Search Console in the first place. So if you go into Google, you would literally just type in um, Google Search Console. And this screen I've found it's been confusing clients a little bit because what you click on has changed. So it's usually just that first link at the top there um, either of these two but you just click the first one and just click where it says start now now it will be helpful if you're already signed into a google account um, if not you kind of want to make sure that you do sign into the the correct google account that your business is linked to it just means everything's all linked in the one place one of the issues sometimes i find is that that um a client has maybe set up a Google Search Console account, but then they can't find it and they might have been signed into like an older email address. So um, it ends up kind of not quite linked to the business account. So it's worth just making sure that you're signed in with the email address that you want to use. So when you click start now, you'll be asked to enter your website address. And it's really important that the website address you enter is the correct one. In fact, we're going to set up more than one version of your um your website address and there's a there's a reason for that um, if we look at the photo seo lab for example here you can see that the url is https but what we're going to do is add four different versions of this we're going to add http with and without the www and we're also going to add the https without with and without the www as well this is because Every, the, the one that's shown in the address bar should be the canonical version. So that should be the version that is shown to, um, it, it should, it's the version that's kind of shown in the search results and really everything should redirect to that. Now, if there are any issues or you've got any problems with mixed content, what can happen is traffic can go to one of the other versions. So although you're not really going to use the other versions, um, generally you know you're not really going to be getting data from them if there is an issue it's handy if you can see where that issue is so we are going to add the four versions um feel free to just answer ask questions as we go along by the way um so i'm going to just go back into the overview and essentially show you what how you would add a property so we're going to click on the top left here and just click add property and i'm going to copy um, just literally copy out of the address bar that's just the easiest way if you're like me and you just spell things like photography wrong um, click continue and it's going to give you a few different options to verify now it will depend on what type of site you've got what's the best verification method to use if you use a show it site it's actually probably a little bit easier to verify it through analytics um, first and then to use the analytics account to verify it um, if you use show it if you use squarespace i would say um, go with the, do the same sort of thing which is usually fine 
Um, if you're on WordPress, then you can verify it using the Yoast plugin. So this is the method that I'm going to use today. Um, and you can do this using an HTML tag. So we're just going to click on this top version here and highlight this. And I would yet recommend the Yoast plugin, by the way, um, over something like All in One SEO. And then we're going to head over to the back end of the Photo SEO Lab site. Okay, that's going to want me to sign in again. Of course it is. I've literally just been on there all day. <laughs> I'm going to stop screen share in a second and just sign into the website again. Right, I will screen share again in a second and you won't have to look at my confused face. Okay. Awesome, okay, so where were we? Right, so if you go down on the left hand side and look at where the, the Yoast um, plugin is, okay, and then click on general. Now there's a couple of options here. We're gonna potentially be using them both well, we are going to be using them both. Um, but just click on Webmaster Tools. And then where it says Google Verification Codes, we're just going to paste in that tag and press Save. Now if we head back over to Google Search Console, where's the correct one? And press Verify. In theory, I was waiting for that to go red there because these things always happen live. live. <laughs> um, so you should get a green ownership verified. So I would verify the kind of the, the correct, the canonical um, version first and then do the other four. So I'm not gonna um, make you watch me do the other three versions of it. Sorry, not four. Four in total, but you know what I mean. Um, I'm not gonna sit and do those just now. Um, but it does mean that this is uh, set up and verified. Now there's no data in here at the moment. So I wouldn't panic too much about that. It can take a few days for kind of data to start filtering through. And this is somehow, like when you hire, a, say, an SEO company and you've not been tracking this already, really optimization changes are best made based on actual data and performance. So if you don't have any data in here at all, sometimes it can actually be better. In fact, in most cases, unless it's a brand new site, it's actually better to wait and have at least a month's worth of data to really get a deep understanding of what is performing well and um, how Google's interpreting those pages, what are they ranking for, what queries are they being delivered for, to make sure that kind of informed decisions can be made. So what I would say is if you do hire an SEO company, for example, and your site's been around for a while and um, you've not been tracking your data, expect perhaps a little bit of a wait at the start because really this data has um, is so useful and contains a bunch of kind of useful beneficial information that will make help make informed decisions about ranking now i have been tracking my wedding photography site for some time really for quite a while um, so we're going to be using the data within that to talk through the different features within google search console um, however there's a few things to do when you first set up things from scratch so if you're doing this yourself these would be my recommended next steps. Now, firstly, you want to make sure that you are going to be targeting the correct country. Um, you also want to go through a couple of little settings. And what I should have landed in my inbox is an email from Google um, prompting me to set up a few little bits and pieces. I would also recommend submitting a sitemap. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that as well. And that's something else that can be done using the Yoast plugin. But there are a few different methods. What I would suggest, though, if you maybe have submitted a sitemap in the past using one plugin and then you change your plugin and use a different one or things change, um, you might be shown errors. Now, those errors don't necessarily mean there's a problem. You can get errors because of a change in information. So if Google has seen one thing and that's changed to something else, that can cause a, a kind of errors where there might not necessarily be a problem. Let's see... 
um, if we have any questions so far. Joshua, as if you could do it in Yoast. Did you not know that, Josh? Please tell me you knew that. Um, I already verified through analytics. Should I also do it through Yoast? Not necessarily. If you've already verified through analytics, you could have chosen the other option. I find that that tends to work about 50% of the time. It's a little bit hit and miss. So if it doesn't work though, usually there's a reason it doesn't work. And what I tend to find is that maybe if you've moved over to HTTPS recently, it might be that the property set up wrong in analytics. So sometimes if it doesn't work, it's worth going and having a dig about and finding out why it's not worked. Because actually there could be an underlying issue there or something that needs corrected. But if you wanted to save yourself a bit of hassle, you could just do it through Yoast. So either or, but if it doesn't work, you know, I would say um, check your analytics settings for sure. So let's see if we get any other questions. Now, when I've done lives before, I've noticed that they've not always updated very quickly. So um, if you're typing something, I can only really see about four at the moment, but um, we'll get stuck in anyway. So what we would want to do next is kind of let Google know about the structure of the site. Now, the Photo SEO Lab, because it's brand new, it's a little fledgling website that's like two weeks old. Um, there's not really a lot of pages yet, so it's not really going to be a lot of work to crawl, but we are going to submit a sitemap just so I can show you how to do it. Um, now, we can click on some settings first, um, and we can see here that um, I'm the verified owner, etc. Now, if you were hiring an SEO company, then this is where you would add um, access to that company. So, for example, if you wanted to go to users and permissions, um, we could go in here and add on a user. So I'll just drag my head out of the way. So just see this blue add user button at the top, top corner here. Um, if you wanted to add on uh, the email address for your SEO company, they would be able to access your data. So that's where you could do that here. Now we're going to just head over to sitemaps. I'm, I'm going to end, submit the sitemap for this site. Now to do that, we're going to head back to the website and we're going to be in the, still in the general Yoast settings and we're going to go to features. Now I would recommend having all of these things um, turned on. Where it says XML sitemaps here, do you see the little question mark? Just click on that. Now, they used to have this shown, so, but they've kind of hidden away. I don't know why. Um, we're just going to open this in a new tab. Okay, and that gives us our sitemap address. So you'll notice this is a full thing here, and we don't actually need the full thing. So just be careful that you don't submit the full URL because you'll repeat the first part. So we're just going to copy the link address and then head back over to our sitemaps. So you see we've already got the HTTPS part. Um, and the domain name. So we just need to delete off the first part. And also we've already got the trail and slash, so we don't need that there. The biggest mistake I see, the biggest reason that this doesn't work is because either the trail and slash is left in, so you end up with two trail and slashes, which doesn't work, um, or you've got a duplication of the domain part. So we're just gonna click submit and hope this works, okay. Um, there we go, yay, okay. So you'll see that it shows up here and it's the status is shown as success and it's discovered 15 URLs. Now, there's only supposed to be 10. So um, I might not have successfully hidden some pages properly. <laughs> Awkward. Um, uh, so yeah, anyway, <laughs> uh, just make sure that the ones that like, you don't have any pages in there that shouldn't be shown or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that will help kind of Google um, see the structure of the site. Now your site should be easy to crawl and kind of well linked together and everything anyway. So but submitting the sitemap does help a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to show you the different um, features within Google Search Console. Now that we've got our site set up, we've got our page map submitted. And what I would say is just leave this a few days. Don't worry if data doesn't appear right away. Google is slow, okay? Um, things don't happen very quickly in the world of SEO, really. It, although, um, you know, there can be shorter term fluctuations, really things are better looked at over a, a longer time frame. So leave it two or three days, come back in a week, see what's there. Um, so we're going to head over to my photography site now. Now, when you sign in, typically you will be, um, you will land on the overview page. So there's not a lot of data on the overview page. So we're going to um, 
what I would suggest is just make sure you're on the, the correct version. So HTTPS with a www for my photography site. We're going to look at performance first. Um, and one of the awesome improvements with um, the new version of the Google Search Console has been able to change the, um, the amount of data that you can see. Previously and for like forever, you've only be, we've only been able to see really three months worth of data. That has now increased to 16 months, which is awesome. It's really helpful to be able to see trends and everything. Um, however, the, my wedding photography business is seasonal. So I quite like being able to look at 12 months because I will see typical seasonal um, changes. For example, December, no one cares about weddings really. There's always a dip at that time of year. Um, and then things kind of pick up in, in January again. Um, now, what I would recommend doing as well is turning on average position and average CTR. Now, just to talk about what these are. Total clicks is how many times someone has clicked on your website when it's shown in organic search results. So these are all organic figures. So this is not traffic from Facebook or anywhere else. It's just organic search. An impression is whenever you're shown in the search results. So it doesn't matter if you're shown on page 10, position 100 or whatever, it still counts as an impression. So this is why if you've got a lot of underperforming pages, your click-through rate can look kind of low. So CTR is click-through rate. That's how many clicks you get in relation to how many impressions, okay? And your average position is, it's going to be an average because it, your positions will naturally vary. It's um, quite unlikely that you're going to be, a, a, any particular page is going to just hit one position and just stay there. Um, there's natural variation for a whole host of reasons as well. Search is personalized. It's personalized to the user. So where you rank for one, pers for one person could be different to where you rank for another person. And this is why when you search for yourself, you're, it's not an accurate representation of where you rank at all because you might appear quite high because you spend a lot of time on your website, <laughs> you know, whereas actually you might not be anywhere near the top or you might look as if you don't rank as high as you do. So really it's best to just go off the data in, in Search Console. And even though I invest a lot of money in um, different SEO software that tracks position and tracks keyword performance, really there's a, no third party software I've found that's kind of as accurate and kind of rep representative of how things are at, um, that, that's kind of as accurate as Google Search Console. So I would just recommend learning how to use this and using this. Now you'll see when you look at your Google, Google Search Console that you have four columns here and I've got some extra data. Now I've got that data because I use a plugin called Keywords Everywhere. And if some of you have watched some of my previous tutorials, you'll know what that's all about, but we'll save that for another day. So you can just kind of ignore these three columns at the moment. You're not going to have those unless you use that plugin. Now, um, let's see if we've got any questions. Sarah's saying, I've just noticed I have three sitemaps. Um, <laughs> uh, post, page and category, should I submit all three? So post and pages for sure. Um, and I would say with category, it depends. Are your category set to be indexed or not? Um, definitely posts and pages. With mine, um, because my site is just so new and tiny, there is no blog. Uh, that's something I will be adding to. So yeah, I would say, Sarah, submit the posts and pages and let's maybe talk about categories. Okay. So um, let's have a look at some of this, this actual data then in terms of numbers. So on the right-hand side here, you'll see we've got clicks, impressions, um, CTR and position. Now, if you click on any of these, it changes the order. So say if we check, click on clicks, these are some of the terms that I've had the least clicks for. Um, if you click on it again, it changes the order. So the maximum amount goes at the top. Same with impressions. So if you click on it, it changes the order. Click through rate is the same. So you see the things that I've got the highest click through rate for. Wedding foundation for oily skin. <laughs> so it's quite interesting to see some of the things that you rank for actually. Um, and same with position. Uh, so some of my lowest ranking positions compared to some of the highest. Now, 
I do rank for quite a lot of different terms. My website is quite established. We're just going to add more rows here so we can look at the top 100 things. Um, so that, that's how to kind of work those buttons there. And we're going to be coming back to that in a moment. Looking at these um, options along the top here, queries are essentially like keywords. So that's a different phrases that um, Google's delivering your site for. And if you have not used ideal kind of titles or um, as if your content's a little bit sparse or if you haven't put um, good quality alt text in, what you could find is that you end up having your site delivered for some pretty random queries and it can cause problems in terms of Google understanding what you should be ranking for. Um, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, if we head over to pages, we can see um, what pages, you know, is this kind of same sort of thing where we can change the, uh, the situation here in relation to clicks and impressions. So again, the, the fewest impressions. So photo book is doing really well. <laughs> um, home pages had 165,610 um, impressions. Um, and we've got a range of different clicks there. Now the, these are figures for the last year, right enough. Um, also, we can change the position. And this is one of the areas where I'm doing consultations with clients that we, we do look at because what we want to see is what pages are ranking on page one? What terms are they ranking for? Are they ranking for the correct terms? And what pages are, are potential quick wins? They might be hovering about page two, three, or four. And what we can do is analyze those pages and work out where the gaps are. So look at what's ranking highest. Um, in the search results at that time because things do change and then reverse engineer what your competitors are doing to ensure that your page can perform better um, and the strategy for each of those pages will vary depending on where you are in the world and um, what your competitors are doing what specifically ranking highest and it'll also be influenced by things like your domain authority as well now for you, those of you that are unfamiliar with domain authority it's a score on your site um, it's out of 100 and the more kind of established your site is the more links the more um, social media mentions uh, you know a whole range of different factors the, um, the better the authority of your site the better the, the easier it is going to be for you to kind of rank well so brand new sites can often have a fairly low domain authority for a while and you know it's over only over time of building up links to your site and building up the authority of it um, that it, it kind of gained some higher numbers there. Th this is something that um, one of the SEO tools I use called the Mozbar. Um, is, it's like a score on that. In fact, let me show you it. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I've gone off on a tangent already. I knew this had happened. Um, what was I doing? What was I doing? I was going to show you the Mozbar. Um, Okay, so the Mozbar is a little tool that helps us just see how your, your site, um, how Google sees it. So I'm just going to switch on here and just so you can see my domain authority. So my domain authority is 26. Probably could be higher if I worked more at kind of building backlinks to my site. Um, but I kind of haven't, so, you know. Um, anyway, so the... The fact that my domain authority is 26, if I was speaking with a client that had a domain authority around about that, I'd be potentially recommending a different strategy than if your domain authority was six. So for example, the photo SEO lab site, because it's brand new, domain authority is only like a two, I think. It's pretty low. Oh, it's a three now. Yay. It's increased in the last week. Um, uh, so yeah, because it's quite low, um, I would not be able to compete for the same kind of level of kind of keywords, like the really competitive ones. So I would have a different strategy approach. But anyway, so it's just a kind of, um, it's not just a simple case of you want to rank for whatever keyword and you can kind of just reverse engineer things. There's more things at play in terms of your overall um, how Google sees your site and it's looking at things like the relevance, the quality and the kind of trustworthiness as well in the, in the authority of the site. So if we head back to Google Search Console, uh, thanks Nick. Yeah, um, the shot was from the courtyard at Manchester Town Hall, um, which is closed now for refurb for seven years. Got it. Love shooting weddings in that building. Um, to see if there's any more questions. Okay, so, so 
we also want to potentially look at the countries depends on if you were um shooting weddings internationally or not i quite like shooting weddings as close to my house as possible so although i do have a little bit of traffic from the us but i work with hundreds of photographers based in the us um and some of it's probably from them to be honest uh, you can look at the different devices and see what percentage of your traffic is coming from mobile, from desktop and from tablets. Um, and it's quite interesting that the click through rate from tablets is actually significantly more than from desktop. Um, OK, so we're going to go back to pages and I'm going to show you really the ideal kind of way to be using the, the data within Google Search Console to um, to help you rank better and to help improve your rankings. What we we'll want to do is see um, what pages are maybe hovering about page two that I would want to increase to page one. So if we have a look um, down the side here, and I'm looking at a few different uh, weddings and blogs and things. Let's see if there's one that I'm wanting to to kind of push a little bit more. Okay, so we've got this page here, which is Castlefield Dreams Wedding Photography. Now that's a really kind of cute uh, wedding venue that's very close to where I live. It's approximately a four minute drive, depending on whether the traffic lights are red or not. Um, it, if it, at peak times, it can be up to 10 minutes. <laughs> I can walk it in about 15. Um, so I love shooting there, it's awesome. Um, however, that page, which was ranking highly, is now hovering about a position 13, which is not where I want it to be. Um, the click-through rate is only 1.1%, and really uh, what, what good looks like from a click rate point of view would be to maybe be over 3% or 4%. Google's given a ton of impressions though, um, but over the last year, it's only really had about 80 clicks, which isn't, I mean, it's okay, but it's not fantastic, you know? Um, so really, I'd want to be um, having a look at that page and seeing what I could do to get that ranking higher. So let's have a look at it. Uh, now, I'm just going to drag the position so it's not getting in the way. OK, so just looking at the page, ignoring the photos for a second, um, looking at the page from a kind of SEO point of view, you can see that the page authority is 18 and there's zero links coming into this page, like zero. Now, most links typically go to the home page. So really we'd want um, links to be going from not just the home page, but to other landing pages and kind of key pages as well. Um, so that's something that where I would kind of be best to work on building up the links coming into this page and kind of make sure that I've shared on different social media platforms as well so that there's links coming in from places like LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, but also maybe try to connect with some blogger outreach. So whether that's connecting with a venue, excuse me, and getting a link back from them or um, getting this post written about by a blogger um, or getting it kind of featured uh, in one of the, the wedding blogs or something and if it was going to get a feature I would want the link to come back to this page specifically rather than my home page because it's going to be more relevant. I'd also want to try and have the anchor text so the text that links to the actual page to reflect the main keyword that I'm aiming for as well. So that's things from a kind of authority point of view um, when it comes to SEO but I'd also want to look at things from a quality and a relevance point of view as well. So what I could do um, is just type in Castlefield Rooms Wedding Photography. And look and see who is ranking there at the moment. Now, if we look at this here, do you see I'm shown as being in the top half a dozen? So if I just Googled myself, that would lead me into a false sense of security that I was actually performing okay, whereas actually I'm not performing okay. My average position is 13 and I want to be position one. So what I would recommend you do is have a look at all the people that rank highly for those terms. Now ignore yourself, obviously, because um, we know this is not accurate. And what we could do is actually open an incognito window um, and search 
so that it's not it's not a personalized search so what i'd be wanting to do is having a look at um matt granger's page uh, mick hookson uh maddie and all of these other pages here and look at the the subjects that they were talking about, how many words they've got, the quality of the pages, their alt text, and kind of reverse engineer what was going well for them really, and put a page together that's better. So it's not so much about, there's no kind of secret um, cheats as such, but you just want to be delivering the best, problem, best possible um, quality of content. So if we head back to that page, so I can maybe include more text at the start, I have got some some tips and things here and a few links to um to weddings but really there's not a lot of text there's not that many words at all and what I've found is that pages that have maybe kind of over 500 um maybe kind of best part of a thousand words will perform better which doesn't mean they need to be super wordy but another thing I could do is embed a video from YouTube so that I'd be having a backlink come in from YouTube so what I'm going to do is make some improvements to this page and then we can um, revisit its position in a few weeks time and see how it improves. Um, now, also, um, there should be strong internal links as well. So I'd want to make sure that the links from all these pages, these pages all linked back to this, this specific page. Um, and it might be that I've missed that. It might be that a couple of them do and have missed the links on other pages. So the thing is, using the data within search console gives us this accurate information without knowing that this page is underperforming we can't take action and improve it now before you take any action and improve it i would kind of recommend that you make sure that you understand what it's actually ranking for at the moment so now that we went and visited it we've had a look we've had a look at who else is ranking for it we're just going to click on just the page itself so this shows us the data here that's that's shown at the top of the screen is is just that page information. So it's not the rest of your site. Um, if we then flip it over to queries, this shows us all the terms, all the queries that that page ranks for. And this is where sometimes I've had a look at clients' pages. By the way, the Moz bar doesn't really get on with this. It pushes things off the screen. So switch it off when you're on this section. So I can see that there's 89 different queries that it ranks for which is pretty good really, considering there's not that many words on it. And what you want to make sure is, is it ranking for the right things? And there's so, so many clients pages I've looked at where it's not been ranking for the correct things. Um, and it can start seeing obvious, especially where you know, there's a, a lot of couple names used and things. So let's have a look and see what is performing best in, <laughs> Um, in terms of position, so Knightsbridge Room Wedding Photography, that's not that's not related to that page at all. That makes no sense. Um, Pimlico, that's in London. That's nothing to do with where I'm based in Manchester. Um, I'm not aware that they have any rooms called Pimlico. Wedding halls, not really relevant as well. But you see that Google's only given these terms like one impression. So it might have tested out how many clicks I got, seen that nobody clicked on it and stopped showing it for that. So how many clicks you get and how people interact with your page is really important. Let's look and see what the maximum impressions are. So Google's given it the maximum impressions for Castlefield Rooms. But the thing is, if somebody just is looking for Castlefield Rooms, that's the name of the venue, they're probably looking for the venue site, not my wedding photography site. So really, the best term for Google to show would be for the the kind of the query castlefield rooms wedding photography um or just wedding and that is what i've had the most clicks for by the looks of things and that's what i've got the, the best click through for but it might be that i mean because click through rate of 1.9 percent it's not fantastic really um but what i can see though is that the average position do you see the position over here the average position for that is 4.2 Whereas Castlefield Rooms Wedding is 8.4. So actually, although the average position was 13, I'm not ranking on page two for everything. Um, by drilling down and looking at all the different terms individually, you can work out what ones you're actually ranking high for and what ones you're ranking lower for. And you can change the content to help improve that. So it might be that if there's terms on here that 
um, I don't think are relevant, I can adapt the content to make other things stronger um, using like kind of subheadings and things like that. So if we have a look down, I want to see if I can find anything that, um, so castle wedding, obviously that's not relevant, so I'm fine being on position 61 for that. But having a look through the different terms and seeing what is actually listed on here will give you an idea of what your gaps are. Also, um, what you're, you're kind of performing best for, is it the right things? And do you need to then make some changes? So what I typically find is that um, clients can end up ranking for maybe different things than they should. And by adding clarity to things like the, the titles, that can really help. So if we look at this, we've got our H1 title at the top. Okay, so Google should understand what the page is about. And we've got Castlefield Wedding here. But there's not really, in the wedding gallery, but there's not really any subheadings other than that. So when I look at improving this page, that might be something I want to work on. Also, though, I mean, obviously I can see that I'm in the top half of the page for the terms that I want to rank for, the wedding photography and wedding. Well, wedding's a bit lower. But that's the sort of thing that would typically have more traffic and people will be a little bit earlier in the buying cycle then. So I'd like to be ranking in the top three positions for that term as well. So that's something I'd want to kind of strengthen on that page, but also make sure it's relevant as well. Um, so when you have a look at these, it's a case of reworking the content to reflect um, the areas that you want to be able to, to rank higher for. When you're looking at performance, these are some of the things, some of the areas that you can look at um, to help kind of work out what areas that you need to work on um, a little bit more. Now, we're going to be um, walking through some of the different areas uh, throughout the week. But what I find is that when it comes to actually understanding how to use this data. That's where some of my clients struggle initially, um, or certainly before we've had sessions. So I think really kind of, I want you guys to all understand how you can use this data to help actually rank better. Um, so, cause it's not just about um, seeing how you're performing as such, it's using it as a tool to be able to improve your performance. But clearly I've got some work to do to make some improvements to that page so that it can perform better. And tomorrow I'll walk you through what those changes were and how we're going to tell Google about it and how we're going to cover some of the other features within Google Search Console as well. Awesome. Okay. Well, I hope you guys have all found that helpful and you now know how to add your site and um, go through the verification process. Any questions at all, feel free to add them below this live and we'll be back tomorrow talking the... Um, URL inspection tool and a few of the other features. All right, I'll speak to you all soon. Cheers.